Hello and welcome. This is Rick Baxter with Cost Control Software. Thanks so much for your interest in quality control. In this video, I'm going to give you a short overview of uh, the quality control granule. I've got mine positioned right here on my uh, roll center, the shop supervisor roll center. You may uh, position yours any place that you want. But this is the uh, m basic menu choices. I'm going to get right into uh, testing. That's what quality control is all about. So let's start with a test right off the bat. So I'm going to pick this choice, testing, and we will create a new test. I want you to see this from scratch. I just press enter. It assigns the next uh, test number. And then I want to get the specifications. Now, I can only test items that have predefined specifications and are certified. So uh, this is my uh, sample list here. In this case, I'm going to actually print uh, or test my uh, purple paint. Uh, I could uh, print those specifications, or I could review the specifications from here if I need to. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, perform a test to give you an idea of how the uh, testing process works. It does come in as a new test, and of course I want to se select the either the serial number or the lot number that I'm testing. In this case, I'm going to test lot number 412. Now that inventory item, that lot number, and I'm only going to test one can just to kind of keep this... Uh, uh, simple here for us. That lot number will have either come in because you have manufactured that uh, that item and you've put it into inventory to be tested, or if you're in a more of a distribution or receiving process, then you may have received in this raw material. In other words, you, are you making the purple paint or are you buying the purple paint to be used in some other product? You can use the software either way because we're really waiting for that item to be in inventory to be tested. And then there is the serial number or lot number of what we are testing. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, let me move this up just a little bit. Now, in the lower window, I want you to notice down here on the lines, this is where we have the uh, what we call our test lines. I'm in this example. I am testing the weight, the speed, and the appearance. That's what I'm testing. You may be testing a variety of different uh, factors on the item that you are, um, whatever item that you're either buying or manufacturing. You have conditions, you have methods, you have uh, then the test results, whether it's numeric or a list, and the unit of measure that it's to be tested in. Notice, too, we provide the upper and lower limits of the, uh, what are is an acceptable range. And then, of course, uh, you're going to enter the actual measures. Let's just do that. So we take a measure uh, measurement with this item, and I'm doing color first. And let's say it comes back at a 25. So I would just enter the 25 in that position. And then I'm going to test the weight. And it, uh, based on the unit of measure and so forth, it's going to come in at 14. So find there. And then the speed uh, calibration is at uh, 531. So all of those are basically normal or nominal values. But now, what happens if, while I'm doing and recording my test results, the test falls outside of these normal parameters. Well, let's just uh, kind of force that so you can see what happens. Let's say I'm on the weight, and the weight comes back at 19.5. When I enter that, I get a pop-up on the screen that says the actual measure of 19.5 for this test is a nonconformance. Do you wish to continue? I'm going to say yes, yes, just because I want you to see what happens. It does turn the, uh, that test number to red. It turns the uh, test uh, information here, the quality measure, uh, to red as well. It does put a check mark in our nonconformance indicator. And it puts a big message up here at the top. We want this to be very clear to you that during this testing process, there was an item that had a nonconformance uh, within it. So uh, we try to make that as obvious to you as as uh, as humanly possible. It's pretty obvious there. Okay, so now once you have, uh, let's actually, I think I'll just go back and set this to a little more normal uh, range. We'll say um, just 18. And of course, it's going to set it all back. 
Okay, so uh, and maybe that was done because of a retest. Maybe I needed to retest something here. All right, once your test is done, then uh, most people are going to want to print a, what's called a certificate of analysis. That's done from here. Let me just preview this to the screen. This is what ours looks like. In fact, I think I'll put it in preview mode. I do print it landscape. You can uh, tailor this to any kind of view that you want. Let me make that a little bigger for you. So it shows the certificate of analysis. It's got the item number, the purple paint, the lot number that was being tested, the dates uh, that is being tested, and then here are the multiple tests that are being performed. And then at the bottom, let me move this, see if I can move this up just a little bit. There we go. At the bottom, there is a, a place right here for the uh, supervisor to sign and date the document. And of course, the uh, test results uh, were uh, recorded right here. So here's the test values. And if there was a reason that it was non-conforming, there is a place for the reason code uh, to be entered here as well. Now this, uh, this document, by the way, can be uh, reformatted to any kind of appearance that you want. So if you want it to be in portrait or you want it to be in some kind of uh, uh, you know, different look and feel uh, to conform to your uh, your standards. That's uh, for certainly acceptable. We just use the normal NAV reporting tool um, to um, design all of our reports. Okay, so that's a quick review. That's the testing process. Now, there there's a lot more to this than just doing those tests. We've got to have a testing history. We want to be able to maybe chart that information. We want to be able to see um, maybe even specifications uh, by the original specs by a customer. So we can even set up very, very precise specifications for each uh, customer and what they require when we're testing a customer's uh, specific item. There's a lot to the software. I hope you like what you see so far. Uh, do contact us here at Cost Control Software and we will be glad to do a full uh, presentation for you, answer any questions that you might have. Let, let us kind of get into the details and understand your business. So I encourage you to give us a call and um, have us do a full presentation of the quality control for Dynamics NAV.